This is Optimal Living Daily, episode 1474, The Pursuit of Happiness, and Finding Your Joy, both by Silon George of spirituallivingforbusypeople.com, and I'm Justin Mollick, the guy that reads to you every single day of the year, including weekends and holidays, even Christmas Eve today, to help you live a more meaningful and positive life. Two posts today, both from Silon George. So let's get right to them as we optimize your life. The Pursuit of Happiness by Silon George of spirituallivingforbusypeople.com Quote, If we would just slow down, happiness would catch up to us. Richard Carlson Have you ever tried to pursue happiness? Are you in hot pursuit at this very moment? Maybe you're haunted by the idea and you wonder, with no disrespect to Thomas Jefferson, what in the world does it mean to pursue happiness? Instinctually, you know that happiness cannot be pursued directly, so you pursue it by way of proxy, people, career, success, power, material things. You may have collected many of these things in your pursuits, but happiness itself somehow seems to elude your grasp. No matter how fast you run, happiness seems to run just a little faster, and all the while happiness seems to taunt you with the chant, catch me if you can. Happiness is not an end product, it's a byproduct. Why does happiness often elude us? Because happiness is not the end product of our activity, it's a byproduct of our activity. Furthermore, we have very little control over the process itself. The best we can do is to create an environment most conducive to happiness. For instance, you may experience happiness after a morning run one day, but feel miserable another day. But if you run often enough, you'll likely be happier overall. This may seem to counter the idea that you can choose happiness, but this is not the case. Yes, we get to choose happiness on the macro level, but making this choice does not mean that we'll never feel sad on a day-to-day basis. If we commit ourselves to creating an environment for happiness, we'll have more good days than bad, we'll become more resilient, and we'll learn to navigate our sorrow with steadfast joy regardless of how happy we are in the moment. You are in that moment choosing happiness. Creating an environment for happiness. Here's the thing about happiness almost nobody tells us. When you chase after happiness, running and screaming for it to come to you, it will run away. Think about it. How would you feel if someone came running to you shouting at you to get your attention? Would you naturally be drawn to them? You'd probably run as fast as you could in the other direction. In order to pursue happiness, we must create an environment that will quietly attract happiness to us. The way we do this is by remembering that happiness is not a trophy we receive for winning a contest, but rather an unpredictable byproduct of our daily living. How do we maintain this perspective? Number one, focus on the journey. We often associate happiness with the achievement of our goals and desires. We often think unconsciously, when I get that promotion, I'll be happy, or I'll be happy when I get this person to go on a date with me. Accomplishing these things may give us a burst of happiness, but it often dies away very quickly. Why? Because what we're really after is not the end goal itself, but the process of achieving that goal. The deeper fulfillment comes from who we are becoming in the pursuit of our goal than from the goal itself. Because who I become is more important than what I achieve. After the happiness associated with what I've achieved dissipates, will I be happy with who I've become in achieving the goal? Focusing on the journey on who you are becoming allows you to focus on the source of a more lasting happiness. Number two, practice mindfulness but how do you focus on the journey? By being mindful. Mindfulness, by the way, is not synonymous with meditation. Mindfulness means being fully present in the here and now. You don't need to meditate to become mindful, though it is a very useful tool for getting there. To become mindful, just start noticing yourself and your environment, then become fully present to whatever you're doing right now. Next time you're driving, notice the fact that you have a car or that you have a full tank of gas or your surroundings as you drive. The more you notice your life as it happens, the more you'll become engaged in your own journey of becoming. You'll naturally find moments to be grateful for. And from gratitude comes a bountiful source of happiness. And number three, surrender control. Paradoxically, if you wanna be happy, you'll need to give up the idea that you can make yourself happy whenever you want. Sure, you can pretend to be happy and suppress negative emotions, but it will eventually backfire. Happiness cannot be manipulated or engineered. It can only be welcomed. Even if you carry out the previous two steps flawlessly, there's no guarantee it'll produce happiness within you when you want or need it. 
What's more likely to happen is that happiness will sneak up behind you and surprise you at moments when you'd least expect it to show up. Surrendering control simply means accepting this delightful reality. Let happiness catch you. Want to be happy? Stop chasing after it. Let it chase after you. Stop focusing on achieving. Start focusing on becoming. Stop trying to manipulate it. Surrender to it. If you do, there's no way you'll be able to outrun happiness. And I have another post in just a sec, but first check out Calm, a top-rated app that helps you relax, meditate, and get a good night's sleep. Sleep is so important every day of the year, but around the holidays, it can get even harder to find time for those precious hours. Parties with friends and family, endless shopping lists, long flights. When you finally get into bed, you wanna fall asleep easily and stay asleep. I dove into Calm's library of soundscapes and sleep stories, which are specially designed to help you get a good night's rest. Calm sleep stories are my new go-to when I need to get some shut-eye. No more watching TV or staring at the ceiling. And for listeners of the show, Calm is offering a special limited time promotion of 40% off a Calm premium subscription at calm.com slash old. That's 40% off unlimited access to Calm's entire library and new content is added every week. Get started today at calm.com slash old. That's C-A-L-M dot com slash O-L-D. Finding Your Joy by Silon George of spirituallivingforbusypeople.com. Quote, sometimes your joy is the source of your smile, but sometimes your smile can be the source of your joy. Thich Nhat Hanh. How do we find joy? We go looking in many places hoping to find it. Have you found it yet? Did you find it in your significant other? Did you find it in your dog? Is it in the grandeur of nature? Did you find it in your success? Could it be in your money or your car or your gadgets? Is it in your social media connections or your fame and recognition? What would happen if all these things disappeared? Would there be any possibility for joy? Certainly in our experience, we feel like these things are the source of our joy, but they are not. If you do not already have joy in your heart, they will not place it there. Joy does not go up and down with the stock market or with your emotional highs and lows. It is knowing that all is well, even in the low times. Joy flees when we are selfish and self-centered, when we seek our own interests and desires with little regard for the needs of others. It is never present when we engage in idolatry. Joy is always present when we love. Joy loves play. As adults, we feel that it is childish to play. This is why we're not joyful. Watch your children or the children of others and learn the art of joy. Want to find joy? Play. You don't need a hidden agenda or purpose to do it. Just play. Play with your children, play with your spouse, play with your work, play with your struggles. Yes, your struggles. Want to find joy? Smile today. You just listened to the post titled The Pursuit of Happiness and Finding Your Joy, both by Salon George of spirituallivingforbusypeople.com. I'll leave it there for today and this Christmas Eve. I hope you're having a great holiday week and I'll be back tomorrow on Christmas Day where your optimal life awaits.